in all the chaos and confusion and sadness and loss which so many of us are experiencing at the moment. Thank you, Lord our God, that you are the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles. Help us not to be overwhelmed with disappointment at the failure we see all around us, but help us instead to be comforted by your ever-present love and strength. Amen. Today I want to help us lift our eyes above and beyond ourselves. It's understandable at, at all times, but especially perhaps at the moment, that we should end up looking inward, end up looking at ourselves and our own difficulties, rather than looking upwards towards God where our hope comes from. So today whether you are crazy busy looking after children and trying to hold a job down or whether you're sitting at home twiddling your thumbs trying to fill your time I want to encourage us all today to lift our eyes above and beyond our own household above and beyond the NHS and Boris and the economy and hand washing and social distancing above and beyond even our own country, above the UK, above China, above Spain and Italy, above the USA, to a cosmic battle. You see, all the trouble that we see around us, and I don't just mean the virus, I mean everything, I mean war, I mean poverty, family breakdown, sexual ex exploitation, slavery, climate change, everything else that's wrong with the world as well, all of it is just fallout from a much bigger and greater and deeper cosmic battle that's going on. Uh, even the stuff within ourselves, even our own struggles with anger and violence and impatience and pride, it's all fallout from that same cosmic battle. Let me read to you a, a, a very short passage from the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. And it's pretty much where we left off last week, if you saw last week's video. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Adam all die, in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion and authority and power. For he must reign until he has put his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And when he has done this, the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. There's a very stark contrast at the start of that little reading that we started to unpack a little bit last week. In Adam, all die. In other words, in humanity, there is death. And let's be really clear, there's a lot of good as well. There's a lot of good things that we see in our world today. Uh, uh, at, best, at best, we see people being astonishingly creative we see people being sacrificially generous and really kind and in this time of crisis perhaps we see that like never before but we've all seen the other side as well haven't we we've seen the selfish hoarding of goods and food we've we've seen the hideous self-righteousness in in facebook and youtube comments but the fact remains Although there is plenty of good in our world, the fact remains that in every single city, town and village there is a graveyard. Death reigns through Adam. In Adam all die. But there is life in Christ. E even the Apostle Paul, perhaps um, history's greatest, most influential uh, philosopher, ethicist, theologian, 
uh, even he, when he looked into his own heart, and he did it in Romans chapter 7, he writes about himself. He says, there's a, a war going on in me. And he says, although I want to do good, I find evil lurking there inside me as well. It's there with me, in me. What a wretched man I am, he says. Who will deliver me from this body that's, that's death-infused? And to him it's a rhetorical question, because immediately he goes on to say, thanks be to God who delivers us through Christ. Friends, that's what we all need. A deliverer, a rescuer, someone who can, who can deliver us from death. Someone who can break the chains that lead back to Adam. Someone who can release us from the death of our own humanity. But you know, this cosmic battle that's going on will not go on forever. Jesus is coming back. And in verse 24 of our reading, it said, then the end will come. When Jesus comes back, then the end will come. Everything that we see and know, our whole world around us, everything we see and feel and experience will not go on forever. Just like this stockpiled food that was bought in the last couple of weeks now lies rotting in the back alleys of Stoke-on-Trent because it's past its sell-by date. Our world too has passed its sell-by date. And when Jesus comes back, he's going to do away with it. Uh, and friends, we're meant to see that as a good thing. We're, we're meant to see the ending of all that is in Adam as a good thing. All that suffering, all that sickness, all that sin, all that death, he's going to wrap it all up one day soon. And so this cosmic battle does not go on forever. The world has a fixed, predetermined lifespan. And then Jesus comes again, and that's the end. And that's meant to be a comfort to us. This world is not out of control. Sometimes feels like it is, but it's not. It's not random. Coronavirus is not random. It will take out the people that God has planned. Uh, and you and I, every single breath that we take, we take because God has allowed and ordained for that to happen. And when he says enough, it's enough. There is nothing random about any of this. God is on the throne and he is in control. And when Jesus comes, he will destroy his enemies. Our passage said he will put them under his feet. It's very graphic language. He will put his enemies under his feet. All the evil forces of our world, all the evil influences, all the deathly stuff, he will put under his feet. I read this week about the emperor, the controversial emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia, who uh, was murdered in, I think, 1975, 1976. Um, when he was murdered, he was buried under the floor of the office of the general who then came and took power over him, after him. And so as the general was sitting there at his desk for years, Haile Selassie's body was under his feet the entire time. It was very deliberate, very deliberate. He was making a statement to himself every single day, my enemy is under my feet. Well, that's what Jesus is going to do. Jesus is the conqueror. He is the victor. He is the winner. That, that's the end of the story. Jesus wins. And all the powers of darkness, all the powers of evil will be trodden under his feet. Even the last and greatest enemy, death itself. And if death is destroyed, then what remains? Well, life, of course life uh, and when Jesus comes and ends this hurting and broken world with all of Adam's death in it he will crush that beneath his feet and hand over an eternal kingdom of hope and life and light to his father and God will be all in all everything will be wrapped up everything will be as it was meant to be once more 
And friends, that is our great hope as believers. That is our great hope, that Jesus will win the battle, that good will triumph over evil, that light will triumph over darkness, that life will triumph over death. And when I say hope, I don't mean like a vague pondering, like, I hope my Amazon parcel turns up today. Hope in the Bible is is a, a sure and certain expectation that changes the way you live today that drives your behavior today we have a strong and certain hope fixed and unchanging not in vain so child of the king i want to remind you today that you're on the victory side if you side with king jesus and jesus wins then you win with him what if as you're watching this you're not a believer there are all kinds of people watch these videos it's on youtube all kinds of people are watching what would i say to you well perhaps you attempt to think well this world's been around a long time you know jesus walked the earth two thousand odd years ago so uh, what are the chances of him coming in my lifetime you know what, what are the what are the chances of it all ending while i'm still around well the bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In other words, that great day when Jesus returns to judge the earth is not going to come in a time when anyone expects it, really. No one expects to get burgled that night, do they? It's always a surprise. It's always a bad surprise. Well, that's what it's going to be like when Jesus turns up for those who are not waiting for him, for, for those who are not expecting him. And while it ca- carries on in the Bible, uh, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. In other words, the end is going to come just as surely as pregnancy ends in labor it, 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 it's just the nature of things it, it will happen it's inescapable you can't perhaps predict exactly when it'll happen but it will happen my aim is not to frighten anyone though goodness knows people are frightened enough as it is at the moment but my aim is to give you good news good news Maybe in these days you've been thinking about this stuff more than ever before. And and I think rightly, you know, I think that's why these things are sent to us. uh, To shake us up out of our complacency and to make us think about spiritual matters. Just consider this. Everything that Jesus said, he did. No one ever accused Jesus of lying. Everything he did was right and good and true. So... When he says he's coming again, why would you doubt that? When Jesus said that judgment is coming, why would you doubt that? And when Jesus says, I am the Redeemer, I am the Saviour, I am the Rescuer, why would you doubt that? He is the only one who can take us safely home to God. That's what Jesus claims for himself. The question really is, what will you do with that? Jesus ended up being crucified on a wooden Roman cross. And as that was happening, he made it very clear that he was taking in himself, he was absorbing in himself all of the sin, all of the darkness, all of the pain all the suffering of our world absorbing it in himself absorbing all the punishment that we deserve for our part in that and if he takes that for us then we can go free and we can be at peace with god so my question today is will you receive jesus and his gift of life today Will you turn away from your sin, from the way that you're going, and will you turn toward him and start following him? If you are following him, then be reassured that Jesus wins, and we do not need to be afraid. 
Let me pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have beaten death, that you rose from the dead, and one day you will come and finish the job. You will conquer every bit of death that remains in our world. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, come and conquer the death that lurks in our hearts, in our attitudes, in our behaviour, and help us to be unafraid as we look forward to your great coming. Amen. Throw